Welcome to another Insider Hoop Scoop. I'm Jared Johnson. I'm joined by the Mighty Joe Yeager. We're coming to you from Minneapolis. Right behind us, you have the U.S. Bank Stadium, which is really a, a magnificent structure, Mighty Joe. It's ginormous. It was a feat just for, I don't know about you, but just for me to actually gain entry, not just because of the credential, but just finding the right place to go in. That was a feat in itself. Uh, but we did make it here. We were there for the open practice and just uh, ready for this game, Joe. Just overall, we are here. We're here at the Final Four. What are your thoughts going into the game Saturday night? Yeah, it's just uh, it's, it's a wild experience just being here. And uh, the game is probably going to be something that's just going to take it to three levels higher than that. You know, and uh, I mean, you could feel the electricity in the air. Uh, the stadium, I'm telling you, for basketball is unbelievable. So yeah. we, I, we were in there uh, for the open practice today. And to be in a bas basketball venue yeah. where you got 72,000 seats. This is, I mean, look, United Spirit Arena oh, yeah. is a pretty big college basketball arena, but <laughs> that's not close. So it's going to be interesting uh, to see if either team is affected by yeah. the circumstances, the atmosphere, uh, just uh, the sense of place. Sure. And that it being, because nobody, none of these guys I don't think have ever played it before 72,000 people like right. this. It's, that's just, so that's going to be an interesting thing right there. It reminds me of, uh, you know, Jerry World has hosted the Final Four and they've hosted the tournament. And I covered, it was actually Kansas, Michigan, Florida, and Florida Gulf Coast. It was a Sweet 16, it was a regional. And uh, covered that. And it was different. It is. Playing, like having, the, you know, a basketball game like this in a stadium that holds, like you said, you know, I mean, the USA holds 17,000. It's huge. This is 72,000. I mean, it's crazy. The court looks smaller almost, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so I was actually down there uh, close to the kind of close to the court and everything during the practice and checked it out and just checking out the dimensions. You know, I think it's one of those where you do the old Hoosiers, you know, the free throw line's 15 feet away. The goal is still 10 feet high. Right, right. You take the me You've seen Hoosiers, right? Oh, yeah. Okay, good. So you do the old measuring tape where it's, the dimensions are still the same. So, uh, but man, what, what a scene, Joe. What's other than the obviously the, the setting, but what's kind of uh, grabbed your attention so far about being here in Minneapolis and just the fact that Texas Tech's in the Final Four? Yeah, well, uh, it's a special kind of cold. <laughs> and it's actually today is not too bad. Uh, but yeah. yesterday, there was just was something kind of bone numbing about it. And, you know, I've, I'm staying with some, some people who live here. Uh, and they said, well, by Minnesota standards, this is nothing. really nothing, yeah. you know. I mean, they've, they, they don't shut down the schools around here until it gets 35 below zero. Whoa. Seriously. Wow. So uh, that gives you an idea. But, yeah, this is uh, – so that's, that's certainly a little bit different. I'm guessing it's probably around 80 or so down in Lubbock right now, thereabouts. So the, the weather is a little bit different. Uh, like you said, this is, this is a compound. I mean, just yeah, – you know, Yeah, it is. Just getting an in and out. Yeah, it's, it, I was talking to a security person yesterday. They said walking around it is a full mile just wow. to walk around it. Okay, and I was down in the media workroom yesterday, and then once I was done with my work, okay, I was wanting to get out of the building naturally, and just finding the, a way to get out is amazing. Uh, you know, I wound up having to climb, I don't know how many flights of stairs, and make a desperate flee from Alcatraz sort of situation, ah. get out, and then I'm confronted because the entire – thing is not so much right now but it's fenced off yeah it's fenced off and there's only two little spots to get in and get out and it's not announced there's yeah. no signage or anything like that so you're just you know and uh, we had to get some dinner and stuff like that right. and so that's pretty Which important serious business, yeah. yeah that's right and so you get out of the building then you got to get out of the compound and it's uh yeah it was felt like i was in a movie of some sort now, i actually had to take this there's a skywalk over uh from a car garage across the street that's how I got in today to the to the arena, but I had to ask people, like, well, where am I going? You know, so uh, it, it's been crazy. But as far as the actual game, right. Mighty Joe, let's get to the brass tacks here. Yeah. Uh, big game, obviously coming up. Final Four, one win away from the playing in the national championship game, but it's Michigan State. You know, Big Ten regular season, Big Ten tournament champs. Very good, very good team. Obviously, what's let's give us two two points. Let's each give two points that we think is going to be really important in order for the Red Raiders to get the W? You go first. Yeah, well, um, I think the nature of these two teams is such, I mean, physical, defensive, grinded out sorts of teams, all right? So I don't believe 
that either team is going to be able to separate from the other team very much. Yeah. Okay, so we're talking about a game where you're looking at one, two, three, maybe four point leads on either side. Probably a lot of lead changes. I'm expecting this to be a really tough, tense game. So I, what it's going to come down to, I think, is just can somebody get on a mini run yeah. at some point and just string together what they call a kill, which is three state, straight stops. Uh, and then go down on the other hand and maybe Morrow knock down a couple of threes, you know, Culver get to the rack in an and one. Uh, that's sort of a situation where you gain some sort of a, uh, an advantage like that. And it doesn't necessarily matter too much when in the game something like that occurs, because if it does occur, it's going to make it really tough on the other guy to get back in. I think any kind of a major lead in this game, and by major, I'm talking about five, six, seven, eight, nine points, is going to be significant in this kind of a game. So that's kind of what I'm looking at there. And then obviously, uh, goes without saying, down the stretch, uh, you have to finish. Yeah. Uh, that means, and then a lot of that, it's going to be making free throws for somebody, yeah. whether it's Michigan State or Tech. Uh, they've got to knock them down because there's probably going to be a situation where it's close enough that you're going to start seeing fouls with a minute and a half, two minutes to go, sending people to the line uh, who can hit their free throws. Yeah, I, I agree with both of those. For me, since I knew that Tech was playing Michigan State, I immediately thought of the boards, rebounding. Yeah. I knew it was going to be the key. I still, I think it is going to be the key again. If Tech can somehow get come close to duplicating their performance against Buffalo, oh, yeah. then, I mean, that would go a long way towards Tech winning. Look, this Michigan State team was actually out-rebounded by Duke, so it can happen. Yeah. Uh, but then again, it dominated Minnesota in the second round by, like, I believe 20 rebounds. So. I mean, if Michigan State dominates Tech like that on the boards and gets a bunch of second chance points, it's, that's going to be all she wrote for the Red Raiders. So they can't allow that to happen. Um, and then on the other side, I think Texas Tech's going to have to force Michigan State in a bunch of turnovers. Tech's one, you know, top 25 uh, in, the, in the country in terms of forcing turnovers. Uh, they've been really good in the tournament. And then Michigan State has shown that they, they will turn the ball over. So despite having arguably the best point guard in the country. So I think that goes without saying. You know, Cassius Winston, they're going to have to at least corral him some. They can't let him just go crazy. Yeah, right. And I agree with that. And I think uh, with regards to the turnovers, part of that is trying to force other guys to handle the ball more. Absolutely. To take it out of yes. Winston's hands a little bit. And Tech can do that. I yes. mean, you, you have the perimeter defenders there that can deny a little bit yep. on him. And uh, if you do force these other guys to try to handle the rock a lot, that's when you're going to start getting turnovers and that's where tech gets some of its offense is coming off of those turnovers and going the other way so yes. i think that's a really big deal it's gonna be interesting to see how the game is called too because uh you know texas tech goes about eight deep you know with corporu and francis and then of course uh, uh edwards coming off the bench but michigan state really is six seven deep they've had a lot of injuries they're just they're not very deep so if you can get the spartans in foul trouble that's really going to hurt them so we'll see we'll have to see how the game is called like you said i expect a physical very physical matchup, and I just can't wait for the game. Uh, 7.50, approximately 7.50 uh, tip-off Saturday night here at the U.S. Bank Stadium in Minneapolis. Mighty Joe, great stuff from you as always. Thank you all for watching, and until next time.